For over four decades, a Volkswagen GTI has ruled the hot hatch segment. I mean, this is the car that started the whole love affair with hot hatchbacks here in America back in the mid 70s. I myself included actually bought a GTI back in 2013. It was a 2010 pre-owned six-speed manual three-door, which I actually love. Now, of course, as any enthusiast would tell you, there's always room for more. We want more power, we want more performance, we want better handling, which is exactly why Volkswagen introduced the Golf R nameplate back in 2010. I used to want one of these cars so badly back when I was in high school. So this week, Volkswagen has loaned me basically the dream Golf R that I've always wanted, minus the color. This is a 2019 Volkswagen Golf R painted in this rather ostentatious shade of pink, which Volkswagen so cleverly calls red raspberry. Now, of course, with the Civic Type R ruling the streets for a couple of years, where does that leave the 2019 Golf R in the segment? That's what we're here to find out. So before I review this very pink Volkswagen Golf R, I wanna first give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Vincero Watches. Now I've been working with Vincero for over two years now, and in that time, besides being extremely easy to work with, they've sent me some pretty incredible products. Now the one watch you guys have probably seen me wearing constantly is this one. This is the Rogue Black and White. It's definitely my favorite watch that they've sent me over the years, uh, and, but if it's not your particular cup of tea, if you guys go to their website, you can basically choose between the Rogue, they have the Chrono S, they have the Kai mesh, they have the bellwether, and then of course they have the marble style. Now the beauty about these watches is you can dress them up or down depending on the occasion. Now this particular moment, it's about 90 degrees here in the summertime in DC, and this rogue black and white has a very light breathable mesh finish band, which does let in a lot of air so it doesn't get too hot. The beauty about these bands is they're also interchangeable, so if you like this actual style of the watch face, you can change out the band to a different color. Vincero offers different colors to choose from. And if you guys are interested in purchasing one of these watches, they do ship them out worldwide. And if you click on the link in the description below, use the code word REDLINE, you'll actually get a 15% off discount if you guys are interested in purchasing one of their watches. So with any performance car, the design is definitely going to be a huge deciding factor for a lot of enthusiasts, which honestly is what's gonna draw you in for the very first time. Now looking at the front fascia of the Golf R, it very much follows in the conservative theme that the GTI has set for the Golf R. In fact, I would even argue that the GTI looks a little bit more aggressive versus the Golf R from certain angles. Now you can see this particular 2019 model that I'm showing you has been significantly refreshed for the 2018 model year. All Golf, Golf Rs come standard with these new uh, LED headlights. They're a full LED headlight and they're also adaptive, which means if you turn the wheel, they will swivel in the direction of your turn. You can see there's a new LED daytime running light. You have LED turn signals, which are nice. Uh, and then you have uh, the by LED. So you have an LED high and an LED low beam. Now, the one thing they did take away are the fog lights. You cannot get fog lights on a Golf R. Instead, you have a slightly unique uh, front fascia with a little bit more of these wider openings to help with some cooling, to create some you know, air curtains over the wheels. And overall, let me know if you guys think uh, of the styling of this car. I think that VW should have included some more of the red accents that you get uh, on the GTI. Really, the only indication this is the performance model is a slightly larger air intake and the very subtle R badge in the grille. So from this angle of the Golf R, you can really see that the color is bright pink, despite the red raspberry name. In fact, this color is a new option for 2019. It's one of 45 different colors. Now you will pay a premium for this color. It's about $2,500 extra. It's part of the Spectrum color options that they introduced for the 2019 model year. Now let's talk about the wheel options. VW did update the wheels significantly for the 2018 model year. These are the standard 19 inch wheel wrapped in 235 with tires, front and rear. They're not staggered. Now, if you guys don't like the directional style of the wheels. They do offer a black, simpler five-spoke design, which honestly I thought looked even better, but I do like the machine finish. The Golf R also includes bigger brakes versus the GTI, and you also have the black painted calipers with the R logo branded on the actual caliper. I kind of think they should have went with a red caliper design. That again is saved for the GTI. This makes it look a little bit more subtle, which some of you may prefer. It really depends on your taste. Now from the rest of the side profile, you can see there's a subtle R badge over here to show this is the performance model. And when it comes to the size, the Golf R is actually a lot smaller than most of the competition. Its wheelbase at 103.8 inches long is about three inches shorter than a Civic Type R, and its overall length at around 168 inches long, this is about nine inches shorter than the Civic Type R, and it's about three inches narrower. So this is a much easier car on the eyes. It's a little bit easier to park because it's not so ostentatious, but some of you may actually criticize the car for looking a little bit too conservative. The one thing I wish Volkswagen would offer is a sunroof. If you guys are looking for a sunroof on the vehicle, VW just doesn't offer it on the Golf R. 
At the back end of the 2019 Golf R, you can see it also has an equally conservative design, just like the front and the side profile. There's a very small rear spoiler here at the top, which honestly looks the same as the one as you get in the GTI. So if you guys don't like the big wings, like on the SCI, on the Civic Type R, on the Veloster N, this is going to be very, very subtle and restrained for you guys. Now, they did update the taillights last year. These are actually an LED design taillight, which is a huge upgrade over the incandescent bulbs that you had on the previous generation. A lot of owners I know of the previous model did upgrade these to the European ones. It's nice to see VW included that. Another thing down here that's uh, an indication of this performance model, the quad outlet exhaust. That's always been a signature Golf R element. I'll let you guys hear what that engine sounds like real quick. And just like the styling of the car, the engine doesn't really have much of a sound to it. It's very you know, deep, but it's not too in your face. So if you guys like the styling of the car, you're also gonna like the sound. It pretty much matches the character. And I also think it looks good with the four tailpipes sticking out of the back. Now, just like the regular Golf, uh, if you guys are looking to open the hatch, you have to push the top of this Volkswagen emblem. The backup camera also lives underneath here. But when you open up the hatch area, you can see it actually offers a very good amount of space. Now, with the seats up, you're looking at around 22.8 cubic feet of space. That's about three cubic feet less than what you're gonna get in the Civic hatchback. Uh, if you fold down the seats, Volkswagen quotes it at around 52 cubic feet of space, which is actually seven cubic feet more than what you're gonna get in the Civic hatchback, more than what you're gonna get in the Veloster N, and more than what you're gonna get in the Subaru STI because they only offer that as a sedan. Now, underneath here, there's no spare tire, just a little bit of storage. The sub for the Fender audio system lives under there. Um, and then if you wanna fold down those seats, they do offer a lot more practicality and space. So overall, as a hatchback, as a car that you're gonna live with uh, as your only car, the Golf R still very much excels. So once you get past the pink exterior of this car, and my God, does it look really pink in this light. Let's get into the inside of the Golf R and talk about that. But let's first show the, off the key fob. You can see for the R version, it has a slightly different key. The, the bottom portion here is metal and it has an R badge on it. It's still the traditional switchblade key. Uh, Volkswagen's intelligent access push button start system does come standard. Uh, no remote start, obviously, because I have the one with the manual transmission. But as you approach the door handle, you can see just touch your hand or your finger on that little portion of the door handle. It locks the door. And then when you touch the back of the handle, uh, that has a sensor and it'll unlock the door for you. Now, I hope you guys like a black interior because this is your only interior color option choice for the Golf R, despite whatever exterior color you get. You can see the R comes with these uh, Titan black leather seats with the contrasting stitching slightly more aggressive bolsters. You get a 12-way power adjustable seat, which are heated and no memory seats. I'm surprised that I don't see memory seats, especially in the highest of high of the golf hierarchy. You can see there is an R badge embroidered or stitched into the actual seat back. And overall, if you guys are familiar with the current Mark 7 Golf uh, interior, this is gonna look very familiar. There are a couple of subtle differences in here to distinguish it as the R model. I'll go over that in just a moment. Now, the R version being the race bred version, uh, you know, it does feel a little bit lower to the ground because it is, but sliding in these seats, uh, the bolsters aren't quite as thick as some other uh, vehicles in this segment, so it's still pretty easy to get in and out of this car. Now, shutting the door, I'm gonna rate it as it sounds relatively solid. Uh, this car has a nice quality to it, and you certainly get that first impression when you start the vehicle up. Now, to start it up, just like everything else with push button start, the button is down here by the shifter. Put the clutch in, make sure it's in neutral because I have the six speed manual. Now you can see this digital cockpit display is new. Volkswagen added this feature uh, last year for 2018. This is the only Golf model to get the full digital cockpit display, which is, I believe, 10.3 inches in diameter. The display is slightly customizable. You can see I have it showing the maps there. You can change that. This is very similar to uh, Audi's virtual cockpit. Volkswagen calls it digital cockpit, the engine. This is, of course, unique to the Golf R. When you change the drive mode here, going into race, you can hear something opens in the exhaust and the engine gets a little bit louder. Doesn't really let you rev it up that high when you're in park. However, what I found is if you turned off the stability control, put the clutch in, now it'll let you rev it up higher. And the engine itself, we'll go into the driving dynamics later on because I, I think the engine is definitely unique uh, sounding and I do like the way it sounds and the way it feels. Now, looking at the rest of this interior, Volkswagen has always done a good job at offering a high quality interior that's much more luxurious and much more mature versus the competition. I think it's actually a little bit too plain and safe if I'm being honest. I kind of saw the same thing with the Jetta GLI 
although that does have a newer interior than this. They upgraded the infotainment system here with this is the newer 8-inch Volkswagen in-carnet display. As you can see, it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and Mirror Link, which is really great. This is much improved over the last Golf R I drove, a 2016, that the, the older in-carnet system with a 7-inch display. The materials haven't changed. They're still the same soft touch injection molded plastic. It's also soft touch on this upper portion. You have this imitation carbon fiber look trim with some aluminum accents splashed throughout the cabin. The steering wheel you can see here is slightly unique to the Golf R. There's an R badge. It's a flat bottom wheel. I like the silver contrasting stitching, although I think that red would have probably looked a little bit nicer. The wheel itself, as you can see, is tilt telescoping. It offers a very good amount of adjustability, allowing drivers of multiple heights to get comfortable. The door panels are the same soft touch materials from the dashboard. You have this aluminum accented door handle. The windows are one touch automatic for all four, uh, which is definitely good. It's a nice padded area over here with stitching where your elbow would rest. Over here, it is hard touch plastic down here, a little bit on the scratchy side. There is actually some carpeted material on the inside of this inner door pocket lining. There's a big storage area over here, which is good. Headlight controls are over here. Golf R does not offer any fog lights. Um, basically, you'll have this automatic. Your dimmer switch is over here. It's even soft touch over here, which is really nice. I also like the aluminum pedals uh, that you get with all the R models. Now, coming over to the center stack here, let me first put the vehicle into reverse. You can see the backup camera. That camera still pops out. It hides behind the VW emblem, and you can see no trajectory, but it does give you a pretty clear view um, with some tr distance markers, but I'm surprised no trajectory. Don't expect to find any 360 camera. There are parking sensors though which is nice and then you can see here it shows you front and rear parking sensors kind of a graphical representation of what's around you but not an actual camera display now going back to the Volkswagen Incarnate display here um, let's go over to the actual nav portion now first of all I have the nav showing up in there if you push this little area here it'll swap the nav so it takes it out from the instrument panel view and puts it over here this is the um, older VW head unit nav system I think I've seen a newer system in the RT on um, this is definitely still good they've beefed up the speed significantly but this is no Audi virtual cockpit of course they had to you know save something for the Audi but you can see what um, it does have a proximity sensor so when my hand goes away uh, some of the icons disappear and as I bring my hand closer, they return, which is definitely nice. You can see your radio sources. I like the way VW lays out their presets. It even shows the album art of the station, which is good. It's got all your usual media sources. Surprise, there's actually still a CD player in here, but you have Bluetooth streaming audio and whatnot. Uh, it does have Bluetooth for your phone as well. The car display here, you can see the R gives you this cool little performance monitor where it shows you the turbo boost gauge, your Gs, and the kilowatts that the engine's making. It also has a built-in lap timer. You can kind of change this to, you know, vehicle status. You can see the graphics are really good, honestly. This is uh, a lot nicer than what you're going to get in a Civic Type R or a Subaru STI or even the Hyundai Veloster N. So I'd argue that VW has the best head unit uh, for this segment. It definitely looks pretty good. Go into the menu display here. You can see this is where it'll show you kind of your home page. You can get to your sound settings over there. Um, vehicle is again going to adjust a couple of things going over to the settings here. Now, the one thing that I don't like about this system, if the vehicle is moving, like for example, I want to turn, I want to adjust a couple of things here. This will block out as soon as it starts moving, which really annoys the crap out of me. It really annoyed me when I was trying to change the tuning st uh, or the tuning, the sound tuning on this audio system. For example, I want to go to settings. I want to adjust the sound. This can only be done when the vehicle is stopped, which I think is a huge annoyance. You have to have that vehicle actually stopped to do to adjust the sound settings, which is super stupid. I think that you should be able to adjust it while it's moving. VW again is kind of you know listening to their lawyers with trying to make this thing basically block out any kind of changes or settings um, when you're driving, which is hugely frustrating. Now, one thing I wish this car was had was cooled seats. You cannot get ventilated or cooled seats on this car, which is frustrating because you can get it on a Jetta and a Jetta GLI, which kind of shows off the older age of the Golf R. You'll get dual zone uh, automatic climate control. VW calls it Climatronic. You get a USB port over here with a little bit of storage here. You can put your, your iPhone 10, which is good. Uh, down here, you can see See the cord actually can kind of get in the way at times. Um, down here, you can see the shifter uh, is the six-speed manual. It's a slightly different shifter for the Golf R. It's kind of got the carbon fiber instead of the golf ball pattern that you get on some of the other trims. Um, the shifter itself is pretty similar to the last GTI I drove. It's got slightly longer throws, but it's a very smooth shifter. To go to reverse, you have to push down and then go over there to go to reverse. The clutch also has a, a longer throw or take up than I would like. Uh, the engagement point is also right at the end of the travel 
level, which does take a little bit of getting used to. I don't love all the empty buttons over here, which kind of annoys me. I like that VW put a dedicated button here to shut off the stability control. All the other VW models, you have to go into the actual screen to do that, which is hugely frustrating. The drive mode selector, you can see, uh, they made their dynamic chassis control standard, so you have a choice between eco, comfort, normal, race and then custom where you can kind of adjust everything to your liking here which is really good um, a lot more driving modes versus the last G, uh, golf r that i drove that didn't have that option vw made their dynamic chassis control standard uh, for 2018. you can see over here there is a nice little area here for your cup holders with a nice sturdy lid you have an electronic parking brake you have another 12 volt over there and then this over here has always slid um, but before you couldn't open it now vw has allowed you to open this which is good gives you a little bit of storage over there and if you want your armrest to be you know slightly forward and whatnot you can still adjust that so i like how vw has added that a uh, sunroof if you guys are looking for that still not available on the golf r but you can get it on a gti hugely frustrating i think vw needs to adjust that because even though this is supposed to be the r people want to be able to use a sunroof or have a sunroof the seats i think they're hugely supportive and comfortable while they don't look quite as cool as what you get on a type r or an sti these are way better than the veloster n which has those cheap cloth seats um, this over here is a manual uh like two-way power six-way manual adjustment uh, versus the driver's 12-way the glove compartment you can see here it's big it's got your usb or your sd slots and your cd uh, changers over there your cd player slot is over there and it's lined with felt so this is definitely a still a really nice interior i just think that the design is starting to look a little bit plain it's missing a wireless charger would like to see ventilated seats and memory seats which i imagine vw will be offering or including for the next generation mark h with mark 8 golf r and gti which they have already confirmed to be showing um, probably by the end of this year or early next year so hopping into the back seat of the golf r vw remember likes to advertise that this is a family car and they only offer it in the five door configuration here in america now and you can see the legroom here is very comparable to the last golf that you'll ever drive the regular one vw says you get around 35.6 inches of legroom back here which is matching that of the civic type r it's more than what you're going to get in the veloster n the old focus rs and about the same as what you're going to get in the subaru sti now you can see there are actual rear seat air vents back here uh, the seats themselves i found them to be very comfortable uh, and supportive the materials are hard touch plastic on the door panels here so that's kind of a downgrade you do have these two map pockets here and then you have a nice little armrest that folds down that gives you two cup holders so not much in terms of features i like the fact that they included vents there's a decent amount of space back here but overall this is very much the norm if you guys are looking for a compact hatchback so finally when you look underneath the hood of the 2019 golf r this is exactly why you paid ten thousand dollars extra for this over a gti you basically get the company's corporate two liter e triple eight uh, four-cylinder direct injection engine with a turbo now compared to the uh, same engine in the gti this has been massaged so it has a larger turbo it has a reworked cylinder head reworked valves it has more boost pressure so it's going to basically offer more power 288 horsepower and up to 280 foot pounds of torque now that's 60 more horsepower than what you're going to get in the top version of the gti which tops out at 228 but this does have less power versus the subaru sti at 310 and the civic type r at 306 thankfully for Volkswagen, the Ford Focus RS is gone. If only Mazda would introduce a Mazda Speed 3 to kind of fill in the void that the Focus RS has left. Now, the Golf R only comes with four motion all-wheel drive. That's another indication why you bought this over a GTI, which is only front-wheel drive. But because of the all-wheel drive system, it does add some weight. This car weighs around 3,300 pounds, which is 200 pounds heavier than most of the front-wheel drive competition. But I'd argue that it's probably worth it, especially if you guys are looking for all-wheel drive. Now, unlike most of the competition, this offers uh, either a choice of a six-speed manual like my tester or a new seven-speed dual clutch automatic transmission it's the only dual clutch in the segment whereas everyone else only offers a manual the wrx the regular one offers a cvt which is horrible i don't recommend it now this car is slightly more efficient than a lot of the competition it's ready to get 21 in the city and 29 on the highway with the manual add one more mpg if you guys go for the dual clutch please be sure to put premium gas in this thing it's a hot hatch with almost 300 horsepower the engine needs premium but you guys are probably curious let's get this baby out on the road and see how it performs. So it's definitely been a few years since I drove a Golf R. To be honest, when I was in high school, I yearned and lusted over the Golf R when, when VW first brought this thing out back in 2010. I mean, they had the R32 before then, but I was like in uh, early high school, like starting high school when that car first came out. And then when the Golf R came out in 2010, man, did I really want this thing. It had all wheel drive. It had you know a six speed manual transmission. It just had that mature look uh, and really driving this new Golf R 
it's not it's not really new. They did refresh it for 2018. It's a very familiar experience. I mean, I owned a GTI, a 2010 GTI, uh, for almost a year. It was a used one that I bought with a six-speed manual. It was the two-door version, which you guys know don't offer the two-door. But the one thing about the Golf R that's always impressed me, or Golfs in general, the ride quality is so good. I mean, this road is super crappy. I took this, I took a Hyundai Veloster N down this road uh, and put it in its like comfort setting, and it was just so bumpy in comparison to this. The adaptive dampers in this car really help to smooth out the ride quality, and it gives the Golf that mature feel and, and look when you're driving this thing. It just feels like a car that you could e easily daily drive. Now, the manual transmission, once you get used to the longer travel, the clutch, it's so you know easy to drive this thing. Um, I, once you also get used to the fact that it engages right at the end of the travel, um, I did stall it once, but the shifter, sure, I wish it was a little bit shorter throw, but again, you kind of all get used to that. Now, first thing that I want to try out is the launch control on this thing. So let's switch it over to the race mode. You can hear the engine get slightly louder when you put it into the actual race mode. Uh, and then this car doesn't really give you launch control like the dual clutch transmission does. When you put it into uh, its, or when you turn off the stability control or just put it into a sport setting, this is where it lets you rev up the engine to over 5,000 RPM. Whereas before with it on, you can see if I try to rev it, it, it limits it to just under four. So if you do that, I'm not gonna do too much of an aggressive launch, but I do want the traction control to not intervene. So let's see what this does. It turns off the front assist, as you can see. Uh, so let's try accelerating this thing. It kind of bogged a little bit. I'll have to try another launch there because it bogged and it cut power, but man, <laughs> I've forgotten how fast the Golf R actually is. And even though this is the manual transmission model, it's not gonna be as fast as the dual clutch. This car still is a lot of fun to drive and it feels fast. The engine itself is super torquey, super smooth, loves to rev. And the tires also, these are 235 with Continental Conti Pro Contacts. Not my favorite tires, but I've forgotten how much fun the Golf R is. You know, people like to rag on this thing, saying it's too mature, it's too conservative, but you have to you have to drive one again because when you put it into race mode and you start flogging this thing, it reminds you that this was the original hot hatch. But unlike the other competitors, you know, this is super easy to daily drive. The ride is comfortable. You can see out of it really well. It's really small and easy to drive. Plenty of power. I mean, sure, the dual clutch might be faster, but you have to love a manual transmission. This thing, thank you VW for keeping the manuals alive. This is such a, such a joy to drive this thing. It's really old school, but also slightly modern. Bogging a little bit there. <laughs> wow, this thing is seriously fast. Now I'm gonna try to see if I can get the launch right again. We're gonna rev it a little harder this time. It's actually chirping the tires. <laughs> I got an all-wheel drive car to chirp all the tires. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> oh my God, this car is good. This is good. So you have to rev it past five grand if you want the thing to actually launch properly, which I wouldn't recommend if this was your car because that's really, really <laughs> stressful on the clutch. But hey, if you guys get the dual clutch model, it'll do the same damn thing. But that's the beauty about the R. It's all wheel drive, so there's no wheel hop. You know, there's no torque steer like you get with the GTI. And that's what you're essentially paying for, the all wheel drive and the extra 60 horsepower. This car takes everything that you love about the GTI and amps it up to basically 11 or 12, uh, depending on how hard you're gonna actually push this thing. I wouldn't hesitate to take it to a track. I mean, sure, some of you could say that the Civic Type R is more focused. It has a sharper steering, a sharper chassis. But really, the Golf R is not far behind, and this is the one that <laughs> I would rather daily drive because it doesn't scream that I'm still in high school that the way the uh, Type R does, and it's not as old and rough as the Subaru STI. The Veloster N does represent, represent a really good, you know, value qu choice, but I hate the interior of the Veloster N, but you do, you know, save a lot of money. It's a lot less expensive, but listen to that. Oh my God, this engine. I mean, they are producing a synthesized noise here, but I think it sounds good. You guys will have to let me know in the comments below what you think the engine actually sounds like uh, when you're going through the gears. But man, the steering in this car is so precise. It's so quick. 
the suspension is also really buttoned down in race mode. It's I could daily drive it in race mode, but it has very little body lean. So much communication through the chassis. Oh, it's so much grip too. That is just incredible. Really, really good. <laughs> <laughs> I could never get tired of daily driving this thing and flogging it hard on your favorite back road. It just, it grips the road so well. Oh my God, this is so much fun. Wow. I can see exactly why VW charges more for the Golf R. You know, it's just such a really fun to drive car. And we, you know, if you guys need to daily drive this thing, you get the all wheel drive traction, which is really important. If you guys live in like, you know, northeastern states where you got a lot of snow, you can put some winter tires on this thing. And it is such a joy to drive this thing. Now, you know, when you start settling down and just driving it normally, let's go into the normal mode here, just normal mode. You're gonna notice that the engine gets a little bit quieter because it's not synthesizing the noise from the, you know, from the engine quite as much. The ride gets a little bit softer. It's barely noticeable at times, but I do notice it's not quite as bumpy, but the ride's already really good even in its race setting. And the visibility in here is really good. This car actually has driver assistance tech. If you guys are looking for adaptive cruise control with a manual transmission, this is the only car to offer it. None of the other competitors offer adaptive cruise control like this car does with a manual transmission. And it is standard equipment, which is why VW made the price a bit higher you get blind spot monitoring with rear cross traffic alert you have front assist with automatic emergency braking um, you get the backup camera you got parking sensors so vw has thrown in a lot of tech but it is missing as i said earlier cooled seats and memory seats and a wireless charger those are three things that i wish this car had and I also wish that the transmission offered a, a downshift rev matching feature, the Type R, I love I love that feature in the Type R. It also doesn't have any hill assist. What I mean by that, if you're on a steep incline, um, the vehicle doesn't hold the brakes for you on that steep incline as you're switching from the clutch to the gas. Now again, a lot of you purists out there are gonna really appreciate that. It doesn't do that for you, but you know, I got used to it in a lot of modern performance cars. I like having the rev match function. I mean, I can sort of rev match, but I'm definitely not a pro at rev matching and the computer can probably do it a lot better than I could a lot of the competitors. So I imagine VW will add that for the next generation model. The fuel economy in this car, 21, 29. I've been averaging around 19 miles to the gallon and mostly a spirited driving in the city. Now on the highway, I actually got it up to over 30. I got 32 MPG on the highway, which is damn good. This is basically the same fuel economy as what you're gonna get from a Type R when you guys are you know, not flogging the cars. Uh, and this car, keep in mind, is 200 pounds heavier and it's all wheel drive. So. The perfect daily driver, absolutely. The Golf R still checks all those boxes for me. Some of you could argue that it's still not quite as fast. I mean, the manual definitely isn't, but if you're looking to catch up to the rivals that have over 300 horsepower, just get the dual clutch. This is the only vehicle in the segment that does offer an automatic option for those of you who don't wanna to have to drive stick. So I have to say, after spending the week with the 2019 Golf R, once you get past the very bright pink exterior color, which honestly can be changed, the Golf R still represents one of the best hatches you can buy, the best hot hatch you can buy, because it's so incredibly well-rounded. Compared to the Civic Type R and its look at me, you know, boy racer looks, the Type R, the Golf R is so restrained. It's so tastefully restrained and mature. You can basically be over 30 and not be embarrassed to drive something like this, where your friends don't judge you into thinking that you're still a child. Compared to the Hyundai Veloster N, this has a much nicer interior, a much better ride quality, and honestly, it doesn't give up much in terms of the driving fun, even though it is a little bit more mature and compared to the STI which doesn't offer the hatchback versatility of this vehicle its engine is far less refined even though it's a lot more brutal in terms of its power delivery that's just the way a Subaru Boxster 4 uh, engine delivers that power I'd argue that the Golf R still represents the best well-rounded machine if you guys are looking for the you know most attractive hot hatch that you can daily drive if you're just looking for one performance car to take your kids in to take your spouse in to carry all your crap the Golf R still represents that vehicle and it's the only one available if you guys are looking for an automatic transmission. Of course, the Golf R isn't perfect. It's definitely an expensive car. Some of you would argue that it's too bland looking on the outside. And if you guys are looking for one of these hot spectrum colors, I'm sorry, but you can't even order them anymore. VW says that they stopped production of this car about last week as of this filming, which is the end of June, because they are prepping the next generation Mark 8 Golf, which should be shown by the end of this year. And then they're promising that the GTI and the Golf R will be shown in the early part of 2020. So if you guys are looking to pick up one of the last 
last of the 2019 models. What's it going to cost? Well, the Golf R has definitely got more expensive than the last one that I tested about three years ago. Because VW dropped the base trim lines, this now starts at over $40,000, about $40,395 to be exact. That's $5,000 more than a Honda Civic Type R. It's a couple thousand dollars more than the Subaru STI and about $10,000 more than a Hyundai Veloster N without the performance package. Now, I'd argue that if you guys are looking to cross shop this with the Type R, because that's what I would do, uh, cross shopping the two, I've seen my local Honda dealers here charge at least $5,000 over sticker today, even though the Type R has been on the market for two years now, which is ridiculous that people are still paying over sticker for them. Whereas VW dealers in my local area, I've seen them discount the Golf R several thousand dollars. So it's really going to come down to how much you're willing to pay for both vehicles, depending on the dealer in your area, uh, if they're willing to play nice or not. Both of them are honestly great choices, but I would argue that the Golf R is a much easier car to live with. And an alt I mean, even though it doesn't quite offer the same razor sharp handling and the performance as the Type R, I love the fact that this is all wheel drive. I love the fact that they offer a much more subdued cabin and exterior styling. And I also love the fact that they offer a dual clutch transmission for those of you who don't always want to shift it yourself. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Volkswagen Golf R. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.